after the success of the first share, I went back to the client and I said, hey, I'm going to provide you with some professional photos of your space. Would you mind sharing it in the Franklin community page, which is where she is? She put the nice professional photos and even throw in some before pictures. And I got a lot of inquiries from that. Today, Natasha Jones tells us how marketing in Facebook community groups helped her business for her interior design firm. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your interior design business? Then welcome to Wingnut Social, the podcast specifically designed to accelerate your business through increased social media presence, impactful online content, and translating industry experience into physical success. This is your design business tightly fastened. Now welcome the hosts of Wingnut Social, Darla Powell and Natalie Graff. Hey there, and welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I'm your host, the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut, Darla Jethro Powell, and I'm joined by Natalie, never late for dinner, Graff. Oh, I like that one. Hello, hello. That's true too, right? I know. I love to eat. We do both love to eat. That probably explains the extra 10 or 20 pounds on our butts. I get hangry. <laughs> well, I'll speak for yourself. You do? Um, uh, no. I think I'll speak uh, for both no. of us. <laughs> oh, Darla. Uh, uh, yes, I get very, very hangry. If I don't eat, I'm pretty much unbearable. Um, yeah, that's right. It's when you don't eat. Backs away slowly. <laughs> okay, hold wow, on. you are batting a thousand today, Darla. <laughs> Natalie, I'm pretty hyper. I just got off of my amazing NKBA webinar with Joan Ravasi. She did such a good job. I know, I know. I was going to tune in and listen to that, but uh, business pulled me away. Oops, sorry. I know, I know you're heartbroken that you couldn't sit there for an hour and listen to us yap about marketing. I get to hear you yap all the time. <laughs> but you guys can play that replay. There's actually a link for that. It's uh, me, Leslie Carruthers, Nicole Heimer, and Diana Mosher talking all about marketing and your four pillars for business, for your interior design business. And we will have that link in the show notes if you are unable to attend the webinar. And I thought it was really pretty interesting. I did find out at the very end, though, that my mic settings were wrong. <laughs> the podcaster had her mic settings wrong. So hashtag wingnut. That's because her project manager wasn't uh, here That's to true. make sure everything was squared away. That was true. You're off running the design business, for God's sakes. I know. I know. I know. I tell you, it's never in. We need to clone ourselves. Natalie, we have some housekeeping. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have a little correction to make for your... So for the Risa talk, we have a little bit of... The venue is TBA. I think they're having construction issues and contractor issues, which we are all aware of and know. So we are still <laughs> speaking on March 11th. We just don't have the venue because that got yanked. Yeah, and I'm sure there will be a lovely landing page and all the information with you on how to register for that. But that's going to be March 11th here in the Miami area. So if you're within that kill zone... If you're within a, a that 30 many, mile radius. Let's say 100 mile radius. 100 miles. Hey, what's wrong with a nice road trip? It's Miami, for God's sakes. It's gorgeous. Okay. What else we have going on, Natalie, in March? Oh, Podfest. Yes, you're speaking at Podfest on the 7th of March at the JW Marriott Orlando Center. Did you just come off of memory for that? I absolutely, I did. I think you speak at 2.30 as well. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PodFest is actually like an event in Orlando for people who are interested in podcasting. You might want to get interested in podcasting. Everybody that's just into the genre, curious about starting it, have one, want to improve your podcast. Just, you know, how we go to stuff to improve our interior design business for that. And yes, it is March 6th through 8th, and that's in Orlando. And you're taking me to Disney World, the Star Wars land, right? At the same time, right? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> Damn I, think, it. I think that trip was supposed to be around your birthday um, in May. Oh, that's right. For my 52nd birthday. That's right. 52nd. You're going to go see Star Wars. <laughs> you are a big kid, let me tell you. I know. I, I think I have a deficiency somewhere. I'm starting to think I might. It's okay. I embrace it and I love it, but I'm starting to think. As long as you're aware. <laughs> I am aware. Natalie, today's guest. I know today's guest. Natasha Jones. I do. We hang out with her at High Point Market, Fall Market, and she and I had an epic pillow fight. Yes, it was posted. <laughs> I took the video. It was hilarious. I had so much fun taking the video and then posting it because, <laughs> you know, what better place to have a pillow fight than High Point? Yeah, that was fun. Well, I, if we can find it, we'll put it in our show notes. But Natasha has had terrific success on Facebook. And you and I have talked on episodes in the past that Facebook is changing. The organic growth for businesses isn't there as like it used to be. It's losing a little bit of traction. But what is gaining in popularity are the marketing groups, are the Facebook groups. And she's going to go into how that's helped her in her design business. Are those like those groups that you, um, what's for sale in the neighborhood? 
Uh, maybe. There might be some of that. We'll find out. Okay. I'm just curious. I'm going to ask her. Natalie, you and I know Natasha, but let's tell the audience a little bit about Natasha. Natasha Jones is the owner and principal interior designer of Natasha Jones Interiors, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Natasha studied interior design in Chicago. Ooh, cool. And her goal was always to run her own firm. Being born and raised in Europe, Natasha loves incorporating European contemporary elements into her interior design projects to create her signature livable modern look. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Natasha Jones to the podcast. Hey there, Natasha Jones. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? I am so good and so thrilled to be here. We're so thrilled to have you. I was telling the Wingnuts listening about our epic pillow fight at High Point Fall Market. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. You're a really good Ginormous sport Ginormous pillow fight. Yeah, right? Those overscaled pillows. That was great. That was really fun. I think we started a trend. Wow. It was a lot of fun. It was the best boomerang from High Point. I will tell you that. Well, of course it was. We were in it. Well, maybe we should maybe we should find something else to uh, do a little cray cray uh, this high point. Natasha has a kind of a cute story. We were talking in the green room there about how she and I first met in real life because we were we were like Facebook friends. I would love for you to share that. Yeah. So <laughs> I said, if I'm ever on your podcast, I'm going to share this story. But it was just a cute little thing. But I was sitting in Syria at a presentation and <laughs> all of a sudden I get a text message. I'm behind you. <laughs> And that's how I hear, heard it in my head, like, behind you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's how we met. <laughs> I remember that. I remember seeing you there and, sh and shooting you a text from that. I'd forgotten about it, but you refreshed my recollection. So. You and um, Dixie Willard promised each other when you see and meet each other in person, you were going to give each other a slow-mo hug. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> Nat had the phone ready. And um, she had it on slow-mo, but you two didn't realize that you don't have to hug in slow-mo. You can just regu do a regular hug, and she recorded in slow-mo. So that was funny, too. I remember having to tell those two ding-dongs, hey, Half no, and... just run like normal. It's, it's, it's a, a little part that we put on the video. It'll be okay, guys, because they started it out in slow-mo, and we started dying. It was, yeah, that was great fun. It was the slowest motion video ever recorded. It was slow-mo of us doing slow-mo. I remember that. I felt so stupid after. But hey, Dixie was with me she, yeah. together. Yeah, it works, right? <laughs> yeah. Natasha, I was telling the, the wingnuts listening, and if I didn't say it today, <laughs> I've said it before. Facebook's organic reach, especially for businesses, is really dwindling. In fact, our producer extraordinaire, Karina Jones, gave me some stats here that the business pages on Facebook are getting an organic reach of two freaking percent. That's almost going backwards. Right. But I know a lot of interior designers are still pretty successful on Facebook. And that's why you're here. And I'm guessing that it's not just because you have a sole Facebook business page. It's definitely not. I have it because you have to have it. I also have Instagram because you have to have it. I treat Instagram more as my portfolio than a lead magnet. And I know that goes against a lot of what you guys say. But for me, Facebook has always been a bit more successful when it comes to getting the actual clients to sign me. Okay, we're going to dig into that, Natasha. But before we get started, Natalie had a really good question in the yeah, intro. Yeah, I have a ginger Amish question. Oh, gosh. Hey, don't come on. Let me guess. Is it about my Wisconsin accent? <laughs> no, no, I like your Wisconsin accent. No, this is pretty simple. Wait. A European slash Wisconsin, it's a great accent. So, no, this is a simple question. You know when you're scrolling through Facebook and you see those community pages, like, for sale? Is this, like, what kind of page? Is this community group Facebook page No. Is? It is not. Okay, thank God. I, I call it a community page. I don't know what the actual term for these pages are, but like every neighborhood here, every community, every school district has a separate Facebook page, which is where people connect to, you know, ask about school closings and any kind of city related questions, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know what the actual term for them, but I think a community Facebook group is what um, I think what so. They Facebook are. community groups, yeah. That, I think that's the official moniker. So now that we've established that it's not a yard sale page and what's for sale, tell me a little bit about what is it. How do you use it? If you don't mind, I'd like to kind of backtrack just a little bit and tell you how how I came across this and how it became a tool for me. Absolutely, please. Yeah. So about a year ago, I started a project that was one of my biggest, pretty much. And it was um, a $30,000 furniture budget. But I knew very quickly that was not like a realistic number for that house. So I ended up taking that budget home and designing a house how I 
thought it should be designed, regardless of what the client said um, <laughs> when it comes to the number. And um, I've only done this in like the 3D rendering um, portion of it, not in the furniture selection. So I stayed true to what her budget was, but I wanted to give her a rendering of what, what her home could really look like. So right. that turned into her really liking it. And we did pretty much a whole house remodel. I mean, from replacing the flooring to even new windows. So everything was replaced. So this was one of my proudest biggest projects that I've ever done. And I knew I wanted to share it, not just on Instagram and Facebook. Like I wanted more people to see this. I wanted more Mm -hmm. eyes on this and I wanted more potential clients from it as we all do, right? So I had it professionally photographed. My photographer, who is also a dear friend, she, because I personally moved into a new neighborhood where she lives, she said, how do you feel if I posted some of these photos on the New Berlin, which is the town we live in, in the, into the New Berlin community page and introduce you as a new business into the area? Because people are all about, you know, supporting the small businesses in the area. And I'm like, okay, let's try it. Because I have tried in the past to comment in those groups in, if somebody's looking for an interior designer, just be like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm here, I'm available. But it just, it always sounds so pitchy and salesy when you're trying to talk about yourself, right? Yeah, I, I, it makes it gives me like the skeevies to get in there. I like it when other people go in there and mention you, but yeah, yeah. Like getting in there myself, I really feel like I'm selling used cars again, which I've done in the past. <laughs> yeah, so I just, like you said, it just felt icky. And um, I know that if someone was to search the words interior designer in those groups, that my name would come up. But Again, it's you're selling yourself. It's not somebody else recommending you. So she posted three photographs with some before pictures as well. And my email just blew up (laughs) in a matter of couple of hours. I'm not saying this was like the most spectacular project I've ever seen. I think it's just a matter that the pictures got in front of the right eyes. Right. I have a question to ask you on that, Natasha, because you said something that caught my attention. It's not on topic exactly, but Mm -hmm. you had a client that had a certain amount of budget that you respected and you designed for it. But you took some extra time to say, hey, Mr. Mrs. Client, this is what you wanted. This is what you can have for this budget. But look at what I can do that's potentially can happen in your house. And it's going to cost this much. And you made them fall in love with it. And they went with plan B. Yes. That is freaking brilliant. How much extra time did you spend on that? And did they give you any kind of inclination at all that they might have the extra cheddar to throw that way if you could wow them like that? I knew that they had the cheddar. Oh, okay. (laughs) I knew that the potential was there. I think it took a little bit of education, a little bit of kind of holding their hand through it and um, a little bit of telling the wife the potential and then letting her talk to the husband before I got in front of him. Again, I know this goes against what we believe in and we want everybody there, but this was a a different kind of client. It was a a unique situation and I just kind of ran with it. It took me maybe two, three extra hours to do a rendering. I had to render brown windows for her anyway, right? Because I wanted to show her what her house would look like. But then I just swapped the color and I showed her what the white trim would look like, what the new flooring would look like without dog stains and, you know, just those little things. And no matter how spectacular the furniture is, if we're not working on the other finishes, I don't think this place would have shined. I saw it as an opportunity to help them and make them their house more beautiful and functional. But also selfishly, I saw an opportunity for myself to get some great photos and and finally get that like really good big project going. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. And I know that's a little off topic, but I could not just leave that alone. And I have more off topic already. Yeah, do it. I want to know how you took a job that you had a $30,000 budget per se and whatever you would charge for the design fees. How did you convince her to go ahead and pay you some more for your design fees for what you did? How hard was that? It wasn't. Once I showed her the potential of this space, and I'm very open with people and try to tell them exactly what they can expect. Client expectations, let's call that. So I communicate those fees way before they even ask for them, I feel like, because I hate feeling like the unknown is there and and, and they don't know what to expect, um, how much they need to pay me and whatnot. So I try to put it all out, out there and hope for the best, right? 
Right. Okay. Thank you for that segue. That, I just thought that was a brilliant little nugget that our listeners can maybe think of. If you have someone that you think might be on the fence, might have the budget, and there's a space there where you're like, gosh, this could be so much more. And I know they could be so much happier. No, it's worth the three hour investment. I'm sure you made your money back and more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, we, we all are in or we know the Facebook groups like uh, for Wingnut Social. We have the Wingnut Social Media Lab. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different interior design groups or, you know, for different hobbies and stuff. So but these community groups, they're a separate animal altogether. They're two separate entities. They right? really That's just, are. OK, they okay. really are. I mean, people go there to talk about their lost dog or their yard not being clean. This is like personal stuff. This is like really important stuff for them. So if I can somehow get in there and get into that more of an intimate setting, I'm going to, you know, run with it. And shortly after the thing with the photographer happened, it was an amazing outpour of inquiries. Sure. One thing I do want to mention is I found it very interesting that people did not contact me on Facebook. They all oh. went to my website and contacted me there which made me feel really good because that means they actually did their homework. Because as we know, mm -hmm. people look at Facebook and then maybe they'll look for you on Instagram, but they'll ultimately, if they want to see your actual body of work and um, your credibility, they'll go to your website. I think it's much easier to navigate from Facebook and to a website than it would be, say, on Instagram. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people like the Messenger app for business and stuff. It's just really kind of wonky. Yeah. It's not the best. I do just want to mention that I did take some additional steps to kind of grow this Facebook community group uh, marketing, if you want to call it. So. Because my next question, ha ha, I win, Natalie, was we talked about before about not being too salesy and not too shilly. So how are you getting in there? Is, my, is the first part of this question and letting them know you have these amazing interior design services. And secondly, how are you finding the people that populate these community groups, their budget situation, income? Have you got yeah, the demographics? Yeah, so okay. the New Berlin one, which is where I live in and the one that my photographer shared in, is a nice community. It's a very sought after community because of schools and whatnot. But houses are, you know, not always a million dollar homes. I mean, we're in the Midwest, but there's decent amount of larger homes and disposable income. And then after the success of the first share, I went back to the client and I said, hey, I'm going to provide you with some professional photos of your space. Would you mind sharing it in the Franklin community page, which is where she is? Uh -huh. First, she took a screenshot of the photos and posted it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that so and she was a sport so she deleted that post and went back and put the nice professional photos and even threw in some before pictures and the response was about the same I got a lot of inquiries from that and it pretty much happened the same so then my initial thought was I really need to take this and and run with it right so right now I am talking to some realtors and some people that are in community groups that have higher valued homes. And um, that's kind of my plan for the future when it comes to that. I love it. You're the first person that's been on the show that's had this little marketing niche. And I think it's amazing. Yes, Natalie, go. Oh, I'm finally allowed to talk. Thank goodness, <laughs> because I'm dying over here. So you've been talking about your clients that have reshared the work that you did for them in their home. Do you need to particularly live in that community to have Ooh, access question. to that Facebook group? I don't think so. I think, again, it's the Midwest. We love everybody. <laughs> I think if I request <laughs> to be in a certain group, I could be in it. However, they're not always named like New Berlin Community Group or South Beach Community. They're always, there's a specific name to it. So I there's a lot of digging that I have to do. And I do a lot of asking around. Like if I know people that live in a certain area, I would be like, hey, do you guys have a, a Facebook community group? And then I try to join it. And when I do talk to colleagues or, or friends, I, I tell them right away, like I'm trying to get in the area and I, I'm, you know, trying to get some recognition and get my name out there. So and people are willing to help if you ask them. Are they private groups or you have to be approved by an administrator that... Most of the time you have to be approved, but I don't... I mean, it's not like they're looking up your driver's license or anything. Natalie and Giraffe. Yes, Darla Jethro Powell. Who is our go-to vendor for Darla Powell Interiors? Oh, that's easy. 
Curry and Company. And why is that, Natalie? Oh, because let me tell you, they have beautiful stuff. They are every designer's and, of course, project manager. That's me. Dream to work with. <laughs> because did you know that over 90% of their stuff is in stock? That's like 1,700 SKUs at all times. I did. And Curry and Company has top-notch service, quick shipping, and very reasonable order minimums, which is really important, if, especially if you're a hashtag baby designer. Absolutely. I know you guys go to them first. Say, hey, we're going to hit Curry and Company. What do they got? How can they help us? It's amazing. So Darla, where do they have to run on over to? That's right. So guys, be sure to head on over to curryandcompany.com and scroll your little fingers on down to that designer checkbox and sign up for their stellar trade program today. Oh, and be sure to tell Beth Ann that we sent you. She's amazing. I love Beth Ann. She's a fireball. I wish I had her energy. Again, that's KoreanCompany.com. You can thank us later. Okay, so if you're a beginning budding designer and you're looking to market yourself in your local neighborhoods and your Facebook groups, what criteria would you suggest that they look for in a group? Because there's so many. I mean, is there something that right off the bat stands out to you that says, oh, this could be a great group and they, it looks like a pretty high income level, pretty sophisticated group? Yeah, I think most people should start in the area that they live in. Okay. Because it's an easy in, right? You could say, I'm a new designer. This is, or ask um, a friend or somebody else in the group to share their work, introduce them as a new business. Let's support a local business if you know of anybody that's looking for an interior designer. And going back to kind of what I said originally, I think when you post something in those groups, People are now using Facebook more as a search engine than just a social media, right? Mm -hmm. So in the groups, when they search interior designer, your name will come up. That is awesome to me. What I think I like the best so far about getting found in them is to have just have your clients post in there and post the, yes, <laughs> not I mean, the screenshots, but the pictures. That's brilliant because that definitely gets around being shilly and salesy. Yeah. And I think people are so proud to share their new homes. And I mean, they're oh, they are. Sh showing off mm -hmm. a little bit, but it's almost like it makes it more okay for them to share it if they're highlighting your business, right? It's not just look at my beautiful home. It's yes. look at my beautiful home designed by this person. You know, you're so right, because it's like, oh, I'm really just singing the praises of this brilliant designer. It's not all about me and how gorgeous my home is. But yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the traffic that you've gotten. You, you did speak about this one client so far. How many clients do you think that you've gotten from the community groups on average? How many do you get and how much work do you put into it at all? And when do you post in there at all now or you just I rely don't. on? I okay. don't. I really, I mean, I spend time searching for people that I know that know somebody else that lives in these areas because I do want it to come natural and authentic. So I'm spending time to kind of research that. But just out of those three, well, I didn't mention the third one. The third one was a mommy group and someone asked for an interior designer and my name came up. So that was another your, great your one. Your name came up with another client or they did the search? It was another group member recommended me. Yeah, I got recommended by somebody in a community group. This was, I think, last year. And I, I don't even know how they I think they just heard of me through, mm -hmm. you know, other people who heard of me or heard of me and like, oh, I heard she's halfway decent. Those yeah. are the best kind of referrals in my eyes, because mm -hmm. um, a friend of a friend is my favorite client, because if you're working directly with a friend, things will go wrong. Relationships will be broken. <laughs> but if it's oh an God. acquaintance or a friend of a friend, I think it's nice to have that familiar feeling, but you're still keeping it professional. So I love those. We just started two new kitchen jobs and one one's actually a whole home for friends of mine that used to well, they still they still work on the police force, but I used mm -hmm. to work with on the police department. So it should be fun. Wish me luck. Do you see any downsides? To using the Facebook community groups versus other marketing strategies? I do. Ooh. Oh, I got a lot of inquiries and going back to saying I was very happy that they were from my websites, which means they're doing some homework. They're looking at my work and bringing it back. So what I've learned that I need to do differently is I need to go back to my website, which I'm hoping by the time you air the show, I'll have all the changes made. But went back to my web designer and said, I want you to remove these pictures. I want you to change this. I, I wanted to look a bit more high end and kind of eliminate those 
lower budget mm. clients. And I am putting my pricing on my website. Uh, was, I was just getting ready to ask you that if you were going to put prices on the website. I am. I have my packages through my DOMA ready for a while mm-hmm. now. I use them already when I talk to clients, but they're just not on my website. So I'm excited to try it. And I know that that may result in a fewer inquiries when I do post on another community page, but they will be vetted. Vetted leads. One the one thing that Natalie and I have been afraid to do, we do we do put some pricing on there, but we don't put too much nitty gritty on the packages is a lot of our clients need to be educated. Yes. So uh, we we still are waffling on that. Does is it going to scare away the client that we could have turned over, like the client you had who had sent the budget, but you educated her and you were able to yeah. top sell her and have a gorgeous yeah. So would that have turned her away initially? Do you think, or she would have still called you? So that's my only concern with doing that. I'd love. I don't know the answer to that. To be honest, I'm going to try it. And like I said, the pricing that I offer is not going to change. It's right. just going to be visible to clients. But I do get what you're saying about, you know, scaring people away and thinking, oh my God, this girl won't even talk to me unless I have $5,000 for a room. Because I will, I do accept smaller projects if they make sense, if they're going to give me good photography, if it's a fun client, because you know, a lot of times it's all about the client. And (laughs) if they're going to make it easier on me, and you can tell from the first meeting, right? You can oh, yeah, tell definitely. who's going to give you a hard time. So I don't think it, it it would. I don't know the answer to if it would turn people away. But well, I guess if you're going for super high end, if that's where you're growing to, it, that doesn't really matter. I don't know if I'm there yet. I think I'm trusting the natural growth of my business. And I have the pictures of my first ever project on my computer, on my vision board as a reminder that that's where I started. And I just have to trust the process of how I keep growing. And I can't expect, um, you know, one of the box players to call me to design their place tomorrow, but maybe (laughs) in five days. But yeah, five days. Put that on your vision board. And in five days, that's going to happen. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. And in five days. And I want to jump off topic just really quickly, because I know that you were talking about how you know, in that first meeting with your client, if you're going to get along, if it's going to work. Do you charge for that first initial consultation? Oh, I'm so excited that you asked me about it. I was hoping you would. So it was on your vision board. <laughs> See, actually, your podcast was on my vision board, believe it or not. But <laughs> <gasps> Oh, I just got goosebumps. Oh, yay. I, I did too. Um, when you said <laughs> come over, but um, consultation, I do not charge for my consultations. And I was closeted for a really long time because (laughs) I I felt that in our industry, it's like a big no, no, you have to charge your worth. You have to do this. You have to do that. And for me, number one, when I go to clients' homes for my initial consultation, I really don't design anything. I am there to meet them. I'm there to see if I want the project. And then I'm there to sell myself. Now, they have to go through my questionnaire and a discovery call. So I don't just show up blind there. I get a lot of information, but I do not charge for my consultations. And it's been working very well for me. We just went over. I don't know if you heard Sandra Funk's episode. I did. Um, so we did kind of switch over to that. And I have to tell you, I think we're doing pretty well so far, right, Natalie? Back me up on that. I have no complaints over that. I, it's uh, You go into a consultation with no pressure. Yeah, it just you just go in, you do your, you're assessing the you client. You just let it yep. flow and it works and they answer your little questionnaire before you get there. You ask the right questions before you go. Now, the biggest thing, the takeaway that I got from the Sandra Funk episode, well, actually, was I was doing her course, The Design Standard, and she said, if I'm going to a consultation and I can kind of off the cuff just start designing everything, then... It just doesn't seem that much more impressive when I've spent all the hours making it gorgeous and give you this presentation. It's just, right? Yeah. I totally agree. that's what really hit home. But um, that was another good off-topic question. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, I I love when I'm there and we're just talking, you know. I don't let them take me through their whole house. Like, we try to focus on the area that they're designing. And, I mean, I don't even go as far as telling them this needs a round table versus a square. I don't offer design advice while I'm there. I tell them how it is to work with me. I tell them how I'm going to send them a beautiful uh, welcome packet afterwards and tell them all the ways that we can work together. But it just works for me. And it's been a good thing that I've been doing for my business. And I I don't think I'll ever change it. (laughs) I I think I'm pretty sold on it, too, for a while. I I, I really like it. Thank you for letting us go off topic again. You just you're like sneaking out all these little 
wisdom nuggets here. <laughs> and, and I think Darla's little brain's like over there just steaming because she's like, oh, I'm going to have to go get in community groups now. You know, poor Ellen Danick's right. going to be drunk as a skunk. It's not per se um, a complicated marketing no, strategy. Yeah. It's just getting yourself out there. And I don't know. My initial, like, um, not putting it as a priority, because, you know, I, I do every, pretty much every social media channel in one way or another, Yeah, is I was thinking that the income in those groups might not be what we're striving to as clients. But why? Why would that be? That's kind of dumb, right? That's dumb, darling. That's dumb. <laughs> Tell her. That's so what is your telling. like goal? Uh, for me, if the house is 500 and over, I will jump on it right away. Yeah, that's our range. We're getting a lot of the eights and the, we're starting to get the millions and a little over there because we're in Miami and it's a pretty expensive market. Yeah. It's not the Midwest. It's not. It's not <laughs> what are you saying? She lives where it snows. It's the Midwest. Are you besmirching the Midwest? No, I like the Midwest. I think, I think My she just family's threw, from the Midwest. I think she Come just threw shade. Now. I did not throw shade. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't care. I mean, I'm a proud cheese head, but I am not born. I was not born here, so you can say whatever Except they you didn't want. make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Let's not talk about that now. <laughs> so my my last question. So how many clients or leads do you think you get a month from just the community group on Facebook? So this started fairly recently for me. I'm going to say a couple of months ago is when I started doing this. Oh, and wow. Pretty I, recent. Yeah. Very, very recent. And I, that's why I messaged you. I'm like, I think I'm onto something here. Can I share it in the group? And you're like, no, you're not going to share it in the group. We're going to talk about it on air. I've had, I think, between seven and 10 inquiries from each post. Wow. Yeah. And then I booked eight consultations and so far I've signed four. In two months. And by the time this airs, we might be pushing three. I'm hoping. <laughs> That's incredible. I think Ellen Dana could take a shot. I think I am going to run over to the community groups and look at them again because I'm everywhere. But what's one more, right? <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, you have given us some amazing little nuggets here. Natalie and I both had some eye-opening aha moments. But now I have to ask you if you're ready for the What Up Wingnut round. I am so ready. Now it's time for What Up Wing Night. Wing Night. Natasha Jones, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? I would be a fig tree. Ooh. I'm from Mediterranean. I was born in Bosnia and I grew up in Montenegro and fig tree has such a special meaning to me and I connect with it and I love figs. So <laughs> I do too. They're I great. would be a fig tree. I love that. I think you're our first fig tree, Nat, right? I think so, yeah. Yes. I'm pretty, pretty sure. I think we've had we had mangoes, but not, not figs. No figs. That's excellent. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? It would be hashtag extra. <laughs> 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 so if you ask any of my friends and family, they all call me extra. They say that everything I do has to have something extra, uh, whether that's if I'm hosting an event or if I'm, it's just everything. They just say I'm extra. I love it. If you could have only one superpower, what would it be and why? I would want to be able to heal people. Oh, I know. So cheesy. But no, it's sweet. I, <laughs> I feel that anytime anyone around me that I love, if they're sick or um, if they're having any kind of pains, it just paralyzes me. I, I hate seeing people that I love in pain. So I would love to be able to fix that. Oh, that's very sweet. I love that answer. Last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a profound effect on you, either personally or professionally. My absolute favorite book is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. <laughs> Everyone mm -hmm. pronounces his name differently. It's a story that I read it probably three times and I need it because it's the main character is complete opposite of me. I'm a control freak. I expect things to happen overnight. I want them done now. And um, this book actually talks about the journey and trusting the people and relationships you you make and making a full circle to where you need to be. That sounds amazing. I think that's our second recommendation and I have to read it because who else is a control freak and wants things done yesterday, Natalie? <laughs> Me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Please tell the Wingnuts listening where they can look at your wonderful portfolio or whatever else you want them to see. I'm Natasha Jones Interiors .com. That's Natasha without an H. I know it's confusing. Mm -hmm, it is. And I'm <laughs> Natasha Jones Interiors everywhere. Facebook, Instagram and website. Awesome. Are you going to go to High Point Fall Market? I will probably do it. 
That's not very committal. <laughs> well, I bought a house. <laughs> Um, I bought a house that needs a lot of work, and it's been taking a lot of my time. So we'll see. Hopefully, uh, gotcha. we'll we'll. You can make shop it for it while you're there. Come yeah, on, come on, no excuses. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, Natasha Jones. You have an amazing week. Thank you, ladies. It's been a pleasure. Natalie Ann Graff, Facebook community groups. I have been leaving that on the table. Granted, I have zero time. But. You ha- you are not in a Facebook community group, Darla? I kind of am, but I'm never, I never, I don't, I'm not active. I don't pursue anything in there. And, and I'm actually in the community groups like at the local ones, Pinecrest, Palmetto Bay. I don't know what else and there's. what the heck are you waiting on? I have to get a client to say, hey, shill for me. <laughs> In this group and get listed. I Not know. even if you get a client. What if you get a realtor or a stager or something to show for Could you? Could we take any more clients right now? No. no. Right? Yeah. We cannot. Okay. So. All right. So, but listen, if you can take clients, Natasha has some really great information. It was pretty awesome. And Darla, even though we can't take any clients right now, we could always start a waiting list, Darla. I know. Yeah, that's all right. That's right. You guys going to have to wait for me. Oh. I wait for you all the time. You're always late. You're late for everything. (laughs) All right, guys. If you're in the Miami area on March 11th, come out and see us at the Risa Talk. We're going to tell you all about social media for your staging business because the Risa is the staging thing there. And I don't have a location yet. They had a little technical difficulties there, but we're working on that. We might be under a thatched hut roof somewhere in the Everglades, but I will have those details in the show notes as soon as I have them. And we'll be the first to let you know if you're interested in doing some podcasting, come out and hit us up at PodFest. And that'll be in the show notes as well. Guys, don't forget, if you like what you hear, to leave us a review on whatever the hell you're listening to this on. Follow us on social at Wingnut Social. And if you need any help with your marketing, give us a call at 1-877-WINGNUT. Or now you can conveniently go to the services page and just book a little discovery appointment right online. How cool is that? No excuses. I think that's it for today, Nat. Anything else? Nope. So long. See ya. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to tune in next week for more business and marketing info and insightful interviews with industry experts and design superstars. Can't wait? Then head on over to wingnutsocial.com for more great content to help you get your business to the next level. Should I do it again? No. That's perfect. That's perfect, like me. Uh, I wasn't involved in any of that, my dear. Carrie, we're going to do some housekeeping. It'd be so awesome if you could do like a bell, like at the hotels when they ring the bell and they go, housekeeping. If not, I guess that's fine too, but you know. Listen, I don't ask a lot. (laughs) Good boy, Mango.